Hi everyone! In this video today, I will be showing you and walking you through how to do your final writing for our Wonder TDA prompt. To work on this um, final writing, I'm going to be modeling for you and typing in some things for you as an example that you can refer back to while you're completing yours. So I'm going to do mine on this first slide, but there's a second slide um, that you are going to do yours on. So to start off my writing, I'm just going to be clicking somewhere in the middle of this slide. And remember, when I click it, I'll see that blue box, and that's where I'm going to be doing my typing, inside that blue box. Remember, in order to type, I have to see a blinking cursor. So you're going to need to double click until you see that cursor that's blinking. If I look back at my racer graphic organizer from yesterday, You've got your Samine Matter chart, but if we look back at this Racer Graphic Organizer, the first R in Racer wants us to restate. We took something from the prompt, some of the words from the prompt about August being the main character, and we stated that as our first sentence. So I'm just going to copy that first sentence that I wrote beside that first R and put that as my first sentence in my Wonder Writing. August is the main character in the book. wonder. And let me make this font a little bit bigger for you so that you can see it a little bit better. You can change the size of your font. Um, you can also, if you would like to change your font color and your background color, you can do that as well. So I have my first sentence. August is the main character in the book, Wonder. And now I need to work on what's my second sentence. So if you look back at your racer graphic organizer, what did we write beside the A when we answered this question? Well, we wrote in this chapter I can infer that August is feeling, and then you created your feeling word there. I'm going to copy that exact same sentence from my racer graphic organizer and have that be sentence number two in my writing. So I'm going to say, in this chapter, I can infer that August is feeling, and then I'm going to put in my feeling word. It could have been depressed, ashamed, upset. I'm going to use despair. Remember, we wanted to avoid using a word like sad. We wanted to pick a word that sounded a little bit better than sad, a bigger fifth grade sounding word. Okay, you got your first two sentences? Let's keep going. Back on my racer graphic organizer, I did restate part of my topic. I've answered that question. Now it's time for C. Now it's time to cite. I am going to need to pull out some information the text says. So when we look at my racer graphic organizer, number one was focused on that piece of text evidence about Rat Boy. So I'm going to go back to the say, mean, matter side. This box under say says, 
According to the text, Augie has been called names like Rat Boy, Freak, and Monster. That is my first piece of text evidence, so I'm going to write that in my writing next. According to the text, Augie has been called names like Rat Boy, Freak, and Monster. But remember, it's not enough to just write down what the text says. I have to explain what the text says. And when I looked at my racer graphic organizer, after you cite some text evidence, you're supposed to explain. And our note on the chart reminds us, if I'm gonna explain it, I have to look at the mean and the matter columns from my chart. So looking at the mean and the matter columns, I need to explain what it means when someone calls him a rat boy or a freak or a monster. And I also wanna write in why that part matters so much. So let's keep going. Under the mean column, it says, this occurs when people see his face and notice his physical differences. So why does it matter? Why does it matter if people see his face and they notice he looks a little different? Well, usually when people see his face and they notice he looks different, that's when there's some kind of reaction. Maybe that reaction is something mean, like saying horrible things like rat boy, freak, monster. Maybe that reaction is not with words, but it's just staring. Sometimes we read that kids actually scream. So it matters because as a result of those reactions, as a result of these mean, horrible names, Augie feels hurt and it makes him ashamed of how he looks. So I'm going to write the part that we put on the chart underneath matter. I'm going to write that sentence next in my writing. As a result of these names, Augie feels hurt and ashamed of how he looks. But was that the only thing that the text said to help us infer how he was feeling? No, there were some other things that the text said too. Remember the text stated he ended up in the bathroom. We talked about how that shows that he was trying to hide because his feelings had been hurt. And we talked about how that reminded us and made us think that Augie really didn't want other people to see that their words hurt him. And then we also found that he went to the nurse's office pretending he had a stomach ache. And we talked about that sometimes means that kids are trying to avoid something at school. They're not really sick. They're just trying to get out of school. And we thought that was really important because that can show that bullying and name calling and all of that type of behavior can actually negatively impact kids to the point 
that they miss school. So we have two more things the text says, two more examples we have to explain what they mean, and also two more things to explain why they matter. You've got two more parts to include in this writing. Now, I'm not going to type up the rest of your Say Me Matter chart for you. I want you to do that yourself. So after you finish that whole first row of Say Me Matter, then you are going to move on to the middle row. Tell me about the bathroom, what that meant and why it mattered, and then tell me about the nurse's office, what that meant and why it mattered, okay? So you are going to go in and type in the rest of your Say Me Matter information. And then after you do that, you have to include your closing sentence. So we have to have a great ending to this writing. So I'm going to just enter down. We're just going to pretend like I've entered and written all of the other stuff on the chart. And let's just pretend I have everything from my chart and I'm ready to end my writing. To end my writing, I'm going to go back to my racer graphic organizer. I've already finished everything the text says everything that it means and matters. So I'm ready for my closing sentence, which is in that last box of the racer graphic organizer. So when I'm finished, my last sentence is going to say something like, I would feel like August if this situation had happened to me. And that's my conclusion or my closing, closing sentence. Once you have finished your writing, um, then there could be some space kind of underneath. So what I'm going to do is just kind of arrow down under it. And I'm going to hit this backspace delete button a few times. That way, if my words or... Um, my box had started to kind of move off the bottom of the slide. I can kind of do a little backspacing and deleting to try and get it all to fit on my wonder slide. And again, you can go in and you can change the size of your font and also the color of yours. When you are finished, Go back through, read the whole thing, make sure you didn't have any typos. I know I had a few typos when I started writing that you probably noticed I corrected. And then once you have completed your whole final writing and you're ready, you can submit it and turn it in in Google Classroom. I look forward to reading your writings about wonder. Happy writing. Good luck.